Hey, it's Peter here, and it's November 16th of 2014, and I'm extremely excited to share with you what I've been working on. No doubt you're familiar with the concept of a magnet. Magnets are cool things. They've been around for a very long time, and we've all played with them as kids. And probably, at some point, you tried to get something to levitate using magnets, and you were frustrated because things do not like to stay put in a magnetic field. I mean, you can feel that, they're, that magnets push away from each other in one mode, in another mode they suck into each other, but for some reason, if you try to get a magnet that is repelling another magnet to hover above said magnet, it doesn't want to. This drawing here shows what magnetic flux lines supposedly look like. There are these, these lines that emanate out of magnets, and a magnet will have a, a north pole and a south pole. So essentially this is like a vector field. Like these are little, they're, they're pushing. If you have, say, another magnet up here that you're trying to levitate, and its north face would be facing this north face, these arrows would be sort of pushing on this magnet. Well, the problem is that there's this theorem called Earnshaw's theorem that says the magnet's not going to want to stay in place. It's going to want to topple over one way or the other. Ultimately, it's going to want to flip over so that its south face is facing here and gets sucked down. And indeed, if you try to, if you try to just use a simple magnet like this, place it on top of another magnet, get, try to get it to levitate, it's just going to flip over and slam right down into the bottom magnet every single time, and it's frustrating as hell. So, for a very long time, um, Earnshaw was this guy back in the 1800s, he was a mathematician, and quite a naysayer, if I do say so myself. He said it's not possible to levitate anything using magnets. Uh, of course, you know, now we have electromagnets, and if you have a computer-controlled system or other negative feedback loop system, that turns the electromagnet on and off really quickly, you can get things to hover in the air, but it requires actively expending energy to do so. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just get magnets to levitate things that just stay in the air like all the time? I mean, that'd be sweet, right? Well, this guy uh, by the name of Harrigan back in 1979, he came up with this idea for a spinning top that the, the gyroscopic forces of the spinning top keep it from flipping over like that, and he managed to get it to float. He filed a patent in 1979. It was granted in 1982, 1983, um, and it's now called the Levitron. And you can buy these these Levitron toys, um, you know, pretty much anywhere that they sell toys. Very, very cool thing. However, one problem with a Levitron. You spin that top, and yeah, that's, it's just a regular looking top. Um, but it has to keep spinning in order to stay floating above the magnet. So there's a magnet inside of the top, you know, say north, north. And so there's repulsion going on here. But in order for this to stay afloat, it has to keep spinning. And eventually it will stop spinning and it'll fall over every time. Wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to make things spin? So this, by the way, the, they're called um, spin-stabilized magnets, and it's considered to be the only exception to Earnshaw's theorem for permanent magnets. Supposedly, you cannot get something to hover in the air purely with permanent magnets unless you spin-stabilize it. I have discovered that that is false. In essence, Earnshaw's theorem is false, or people's interpretation of Earnshaw's theorem is false. Well, let me show you the exception, the loophole that I've found. Say instead of having a regular puck-shaped magnet, you have a ring-shaped magnet, or a toroidal magnet, like so. So the flux lines coming out of this thing look more like that. And there's this region, there's this region in, in the middle here where it's kind of weak. It's still repelling, but it's weak. So let's say you put a magnet up here that's a regular puck-shaped magnet. 
and you've got your north face here. This is axially polarized, they say, and you've got, or axially magnetized, and then here you've got your puck magnet. So, in this case, what you have is you have a, a stronger field, if you look, you have a stronger field here and here than you do here. You do have some repulsion here, but not as much. The main repulsion is, is here and here. So, uh, and it's, it's really in, in this ring, if you can visualize, it's three-dimensional. If you visualize this ring that's hovering over the ring magnet, that's the ring where the repulsion is strongest. In the center, the repulsion is like not quite as strong. So this magnet does kind of want to hang out there. The problem is you let it go, same situation, and it immediately flips over and sticks every time. So how can you address this? Well, the way that I came up with, and this, by the way, I don't know if there's a real name for this, but I call it a magnetic well. It's like a, it's a little depression in the magnetic field that is, allows things to exist at a lower energy state or a lower potential energy. And so they don't really want to climb the energy gradient to get out. They kind of want to stay there, with the exception that it wants to flip over. So how can you keep this from flipping over? I came up with a method. Earlier today, I proved experimentally that it works. Say we have a base that is composed of ring magnets. One, two, and three. Okay. Now, we tie them together with a support structure, the details of which don't really matter, but in, in its simplest form, uh, just sort of this triangular support structure. Now, floating above this, we have a second object composed of puck magnets. And these puck magnets are situated such that they are in repulsion with the ring magnets of the bottom. And likewise, with the puck magnets, we have a support structure between them forming some kind of triangular shape. Okay, and so now we have these magnetic flux lines coming out like so. And each of these pucks is, in essence, sitting inside of a magnetic well. So it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to come out of the well. It does want to flip over. The reason they don't flip over, though, is that they are attached to this support structure. And in order to flip one of these magnets over, it would have to flip the entire support structure over. And with these arms being some, somewhat long, the mechanical disadvantage of uh, trying to flip that whole support structure over is, is just too much for the magnetic force to overcome. And it says, well, I give up. I'm just going to hang here. That was the idea. I actually had this idea back in late 2012. I played around with making these out of like popsicle sticks and stuff like drink stirrers and it went nowhere uh, until earlier today I designed this system in CAD I 3d printed it I built it and I effectively I achieved uh, levitation unsupported levitation with a permanent rare earth magnet system in violation of Earnshaw's theorem so this is what I have to present to you today. I don't have the uh, mathematical proof to show you uh, how Earnshaw's theorem is wrong. It's quite possible that Earnshaw's theorem itself is correct, and it's just the interpretation that people have, have laid on it that is wrong. But I can show you experimentally that Earnshaw's theorem is wrong, and unaided ferromagnetic levitation is possible. is coming out like an MC Escher <laughs> drawing of some kind here. God, that is a horrible drawing.